Hi, everybody. Uh, let me know if you can hear me or see me. Um, I just wanted to share with you my journey into the world of being an author. I did a presentation at the library last night, and I know a lot of people couldn't make it and asked if I would just uh, talk about it on Facebook a little bit, so I will. I do have my kids here and my nephew here, so <laughs> if anybody um, interrupts, well, you know how it is. So. Um, let me know if you can hear me or if you can't hear me, and I'll start, uh, I'll start talking in just a couple minutes after a couple more people join. So good to see you all. It's about to storm here in a few minutes, I think, for we're, we're waiting on that, too. Hi, Sherry. Can you hear me? <laughs> Hi, Melinda. Thanks for bringing my book to the library today. Hi, Patricia. Thanks for letting me know you can hear me. <laughs> this is only about my third time going live, so I always feel kind of stupid doing this. But you know what? You have to get out of your comfort zone, right, guys? <laughs> Hi, Samantha. All right, so I'll just start. Um, so... I am a teacher, as you all know, and I've always wanted to be a writer. I know a lot of people say that, but it's true. Um, I went to college to be a teacher, had kids, got a teaching job, and then uh, a couple years ago, I took a leave from my teaching job to stay home with my son, Wyatt, when he was in preschool. And uh, hi, Patsy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like my summer hair? <laughs> I looked better last night at the library. Anyway, um... So when I was on my leave, I thought, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. I'm just going to do it because otherwise it just won't happen and I'll be like 80 years old and I'll have never done it. So I first got my idea, of course. Um, I wanted to do a series kind of like Berenstein Bears about my children, uh, Cammie and Wyatt. And Cammie started sneaking treats and all that. So I got my idea, wrote my first draft. And then, of course, I sat there and I thought, oh, man, what do I do now? Hi, Uncle Don. Uh, so I thought I need an agent or I need to find a traditional publisher and all that because I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anyone who had written a book. Um, I didn't know anybody that was an agent or a publisher or anything like that. So I just kind of got overwhelmed and didn't know what to do. Well, I contacted family and friends and asked them, um, hey, does anybody know anybody that's written a book before or publishing or anything like that. And my sister Jessica actually said, yeah, actually somebody I went to high school with just opened her own um, publishing company and uh, you should contact her because she just actually published a children's book. So I did. I called her, her name's Lindsay, and uh, this was probably in mm, a couple years ago in uh, May, May of 2017. So Lindsay, who was super nice, started her own publishing company called Rodney K. Press, and uh, we met for breakfast, hit it off, and decided, yeah, we're going to work together. She's going to help me get started. She also edits. So um, I don't pay her anything. So if you're a new author, um, you shouldn't have to pay a publishing company anything. If they're, I mean, I did, I did meet with a publisher publishing company in Minneapolis that said, hey, we publish a lot of local authors. Well, um, they wanted to charge me like $10,000 to get my book published, and that didn't include printing or marketing or anything like that. That was just me using their illustrator and them editing. And, and honestly, I thought about it because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know an editor. I didn't know an illustrator. I didn't know anything about being an author. So I contemplated it because I thought, gosh, these guys can take this off my shoulders. They can do everything. I won't have to do anything. This will be great. But then I talked to Lindsay, and she's like, no, that's called a vanity publisher. Uh, you shouldn't have to pay anyone to publish your book. You pay, you pay for services like editing and illustrating, but you shouldn't have to pay people to publish your book. So I said, no, thank you, and I went away from that, thank God. So if you're um, an author, if you want to publish a book, don't pay people to publish your book for you. Those aren't real publishers. So I decided to... Um, uh, not go that route. I actually, the next thing I did is I joined a bunch of author Facebook groups um, and they have helped me so much on my journey. I mean, I would not be here without them. I met so many great friends on in those groups. Um, there's so many talented people in those groups. Anytime you have a question, people will help you. People who have been through it before have so much advice. And I just started doing research. Um, I found somebody named Shayla Raquel and uh, she's amazing. She's an editor. She's a marketer. She's um, 
she does it all. She's a writer and she has something on her website called a pre-publishing checklist. So if you go on her website, um, yeah, I know, Sarah, that's it's a lot of money, $10,000. So if you go on her website, you can find, she'll, she has it on there for free, pre-publishing checklist. And uh, you can um, print that off, and that's what I did, and I just went down the line. So the first thing you do after you have your ideas, right, your first draft, of course, just like you learned in elementary school, and then you need to edit. So that's where I kind of got stuck, once again, because I don't know any editors. I don't know, uh, you know, how much should I be paying for editing? Um, are these people going to do a good job? So uh, Lindsay, my publisher, is my main editor, but then I also hired two more editors that I got recommendations from uh, people in my author group, and they edited too, because like I tell my students, the more eyes you get on your work and the more times you fix it up, the better it's going to be. Um, I edited probably... 50 to 100 times on my first book and the same on my second one and I still found mistakes when I sent it to the printer so it's it's just an ongoing process so I found um, a few editors that I paid uh, while I was trying to find editors I created my author website and once again I did not know what I was doing I have never created a website before I used GoDaddy to purchase a domain name Stacy C Bauer because there was already a Stacy Bauer um, and then I used WordPress to create my blog. And uh, there's a WordPress support group on Facebook that I joined that, uh, once again, helpful people. You can ask tons of questions. Um, so um, I did that, and I'm still tweaking my website. It's like one of those things that I get to when I can. It's not my best thing. But I created a, a Facebook business page that I linked to my personal page, and I had to figure that out. So Google asking people, asking advice, figured it out, and it took me forever. I mean, I'm not, this isn't my thing, I'm a teacher, so um, it takes me a really long time to do all this stuff, but I just kept at it. Um, I created an Instagram account, I wasn't even on Instagram before this. Um, I linked that to my personal page, and then I invited all my friends and family over to my business page um, a few months later. In the midst of all this, my next step was finding an illustrator, so I, Went on Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K, and Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, which are two um, freelancer websites that have people that can do anything, from illustrating to formatting to uh, graphics to uh, book covers um, and lots of other areas, too. But you, you just kind of join those sites, which is free to join, and you post what you're looking for, and then people send you um, samples if you want them to, um, which I did. And I just didn't, I mean, I got a lot of samples and there were a lot of talented people, but I didn't find anybody that I really, this just didn't click for me. So I spent like a month looking for looking for illustrators. Um, then I went on Pinterest and I just typed in children's book illustrator and I found Rebecca. She came up, she has an Etsy shop and I knew I wanted her. So I emailed her. We, um, it was her first book. I mean, this was the first book she made was my book. Um, so she had never done this before. I had never done this before. <laughs> so I was really relying on people that I met online and my publisher, Lindsay, to help me. So, um, yeah, and like Patsy says, Fiverr will make, I used Fiverr to uh, make 3D images too for $5 of your book, 3D um, images that you can post so that you kind of know what your book's going to look like after it's printed. So that's a really good place to get that done too. So after I found Rebecca, um, I'm still editing my book. It took me a couple months to get the editing done. So this is probably, uh, let's see, I have a timeline here next to me, so I don't forget what I'm talking about. Um, this is probably like September or so when I started creating the storyboard. So once again, I didn't know what a storyboard was. Um, some illustrators do it themselves. I can be a bit of a control freak, so I did it myself. So this is my um, highly advanced storyboard here for my book. So I kind of put on here just, I did the layout of a 32 page book because that's about how long most picture books are. And I had to place the text on each page. Like, do I want the text in the middle? Do I want it on top, on the bottom, left, right? Some pages don't have um, text. They just have pictures and some pages just have pictures and no text. There's a lot that goes into just uh, what do you want, how do you want the book to be laid out? Do you want, um, I have some pictures that I have a double spread um, right here. Some just have a single spread. Um, so I made this and then um, on my, uh, my rough draft that I printed out, 
I actually wrote which words I want on which page and then I made little notes from my illustrator like small spot picture on this page of Cammy doing uh, whatever and I actually emailed my illustrator photographs of my kids even though my kids are kangaroos in the story um, I thought she could you know just she probably wants to know what they look like and she did a great job getting my kids facial expressions down even though they're kangaroos in the books so after I sent that to her, she started on the illustrations in October of 2017. I wanted her to do the um, book cover first for marketing purposes. So we talked about the book cover and we got that, she got that done first. Um, as she's doing that, I'm kind of deciding, okay, what am I going to do? Because I'm figuring out how much this is going to cost and it's going to cost at least $8,000 for me to publish this book for illustrations, editing, um, marketing, printing, my website, all that stuff costs money, and um, so I decided to run a Kickstarter, <laughs> which I knew nothing about. I didn't even know what Kickstarter was when I started this whole process, but I kept seeing authors posting on Facebook. Um, hi, Sherry. Thank you. I kept seeing authors posting on Facebook about their Kickstarter campaigns and the raising money for their books, and I thought, hey, I can do that. So I had taken the year off. So when my kids were in school, that's when I worked on things. So I started researching Kickstarters in November, and I wanted to launch in February. So if you're going to launch a Kickstarter campaign, you should start your research a few months ahead of time. Um, a lot of people just launch it with no plan, and they don't make it, and they're wondering why they didn't make it. Well, it really takes months to build these things up, in my opinion. So I went on Kickstarter. I looked up all these campaigns that were successful and I took notes on what they did and I found those authors um, and I just asked them questions and they were so helpful to me. I started backing Kickstarters, I started supporting Kickstarters too so that I could get a presence on uh, Kickstarter and also to help those authors out. Um, I uh, went on Vistaprint and I had business cards made for my Kickstarter. Diane, my friend Diane, helped me design these. Actually, she did design it, and then I created the make the uh, business cards. This is my for my first book right here, and then I decided to run a Kickstarter for my second book this year. And I had them made into magnets because then people could just stick them on the fridge and they wouldn't lose it. Because as a mom, I the people give me a business card and it just my kids take it or whatever. If it's up on the fridge they're less likely to do that. So Vistaprint makes these. U Printing is another good site that makes um, marketing tools for your books too. So in November, I started deciding to go to, I decided to do a Kickstarter. So that's when I wrote my first blog on my website. I shared that blog to my business page, my personal page, my Instagram, and I invited all my friends and family in on my journey. And they were, I emailed everybody on my email list. I just started talking about it. And Honestly, I felt uncomfortable talking about it at first. I thought people are going to be annoyed that I'm trying to sell them something, and I don't. I didn't want to be that person. But people were so supportive, and uh, my author friend Jay told me, "Look, nobody else is going to sell your book for you. Do you believe in your books?" And I said, "Well, yeah. Well, then you have to sell it." So even though I'm more of an introvert and I'm not really comfortable um, getting out there and talking about my book, I just became a lot more comfortable. I mean, the more you do it, the more comfortable you are. And it's true. You can make your book and sit in your house and do nothing, and it's not going to sell itself. You just have to get out there and do it. That's just the way it is. Okay. So in December and January, I spent those two months marketing for my Kickstarter. So I contacted local news, um, local newspapers, uh, WCCO, which is our local TV station. My daughter and I were on there, which was super fun. Um, I had a cable company uh, come to my house and, uh, and do a um, interview for me. I had some local newspapers and every time that happened I put it out there on my business page and I got more followers and I got people excited and they were like wow you were in the newspaper or you guys were on TV I saw you and everybody was just everybody got excited and I was excited and my daughter was excited and um, I made flyers for my Kickstarter and I put them up in coffee shops around town with those little tag things on the bottom that people can tear off. I was giving these magnets to every single person I knew uh, my first book was about dental health. One of my tips is you need to figure out who your audience is. Obviously, not everybody I know is going to be interested in a children's book that has kangaroo characters about dental health. But dentists are. So I um, went, I visited local dentist office in my area, probably at least 50. Called them, emailed them, went in there in person, gave them this card and said, hey, I'm uh, doing a Kickstarter for a um, children's book about too many sweets. It's about dental health. If you're interested in backing me, I'm a local author. I grew up in the area. 
blah, blah, blah. And I got one dentist's office to buy 30 books, and I got about five other ones to buy like three or four books. Um, so I think it was worth my time. Um, so I also, um, with the help of Lisa, one of my author friends who is like a Kickstarter expert, she uh, ran a successful Kickstarter, and I, she suggested I create a 30-day Kickstarter campaign plan. And so I did. I made my plan, and um, my plan to keep my audience engaged, my plan to get pledges. Um, one of the ideas I did that my friend Katie um, did for her Kickstarter was, hey, get people to subscribe to your website, and if they subscribe, you can send them an email saying, hey, since you subscribed, you get the first hour to purchase, um, to back my Kickstarter for you know, a few dollars less than everybody else. So I did that, and that's how I got like 80 pledges to start with right off the bat because people wanted to support me, number one, and number two, they were excited that they got a good deal. I mean, that's how I am. I like getting a good deal too, so I felt like that would be a good idea, and it was. So that was my early bird discounted deal that I used for both of my Kickstarter campaigns. So I launched my Kickstarter in February, and the entire month of February, 30 days of stress, <laughs> as will my husband will tell you, uh, just focusing on my Kickstarter without being annoying. I hope I wasn't too annoying everybody, but uh, trying to figure out how to make my goal. I set my goal um, pretty low for my first Kickstarter because I was afraid I wouldn't make it. If you don't make your goal, you don't get anything. So it's kind of stressful because it's like, okay, I need this money to print the book, but if I don't make it at all, I'm not going to get it. So where do I set my goal? I set it for 4000 because that's how much it would cost to actually print the book. Um, and I ended up getting 6200 which was awesome because then I could use that money for illustrations as well. Um, so during this time, Rebecca is still doing the illustrations for the book. Um, my book uh, Kickstarter was successful in March, which I was very excited about. So then I started planning for my book launch at Hans Bakery. Uh, my friend Kelly that I've known since preschool um, opened up Hans Bakery in Anoka, and I thought, what a great place to have the book launch because it's a bakery, and this is about too many sweets. So I started making flyers for that and marketing for that. That was my next thing I started marketing for. And by the way, I know nothing about marketing. I have no experience in marketing. I went to school to be a teacher. Um, so this was all learning for me too. And everything I learned about marketing, I learned from um, people I met on Facebook. And I, had, I do have a few friends who are in marketing, but most of the things I learned are by other authors in this group. Um, there are some highly talented people in these Facebook author groups who have great creative ideas. And, uh, and like I said before, they're, they're very supportive. So... Um, uh, in April, the illustrations were completed for the first book. I use I use Bang Printing uh, for my books because it's in Minnesota. Um, a lot of people print out in China, which is great because it's a good price. Um, I use Bang Printing because it's the for me it's the same price as China because I can go pick up those books. I don't have to pay for shipping. They're two hours away from me. It's I think it's fun to take the trailer and just go up there. I can go in. I can actually go into the printing factory and see the books being printed, which is pretty cool. Um, so in April, when I sent my book to the printer, um, and my illustrator formatted the book for me. Um, some illustrators don't do that, so you might have to pay um, them to. You might have to pay somebody else to format your book, but Rebecca did that for me because she's awesome. So. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, so once Bang Printing got my files, um, other things I had to decide, by the way, which I did not know anything about was, okay, what size do I want my book to be? Do I want it to be square or rectangular? Do I want it to be a hardcover paperback? Do I want matte paper or glossy? Uh, uh, what kind of font do I want to use? How big of font do I want to use? So all these decisions that you don't think about when you think, oh, I want to write a book. Yay, it's going to be so easy. No. <laughs> so um, my local librarian was a... Oh, I heard somebody coming down the stairs, but it was just the cat. My local librarian was a great resource. Um, I'm a, I, like I said before, I'm a teacher and a mom, so I've probably read like thousands of picture books. So I just, re I just did research. I went to the library. I checked out tons of books. I looked at the different kinds of paper. I talked to the librarian and said, hey, dust jacket or no dust jacket, matte or glossy? And she gave me her opinions. Um, and then the print bang actually sent me samples of uh, glossy and matte. And I just like the feel of matte better. I like the soft 
Uh, you know what's really funny is I brought all these materials down here and I didn't bring any of my books, which is kind of funny, but oh well. Okay, so <laughs> matte, the matte is, I just like it. I think it looks good. I like how soft it is. Um, and I use the matte pages too because I just, the glossy is kind of shiny for me. I just like the way the matte looks. The matte isn't totally flat. It's, it has a glossy feel to it. And I got a square book. I just think they look better. I mean, I don't mind rectangular books. I just like the square one. And I did a nine by nine um, because I felt like the eight by eight was too small. And uh, my friend Jay said, well, he did a 10 by 10 and he had to buy the next size up for um, envelopes and shipping. And so the nine by nine ended up being the good, the best, in my opinion, the best size for me. Um, for my font, I went on Font Squirrel. It's a free uh, resource online. Um, and you can type in your book title and it shows what it looks like in different fonts. Um, I used a font called Gloria Hallelujah. <laughs> I like it because the A and the G are the um, easier to read A and G for children. Um, and uh, I used, I, I think my font is in 20 point. So it's easy to see, but it's not, super big either. Um, a tip on your book cover too. One of my friend Diane said, you know, make sure people can see your book cover from across the room. Like if your book is at Barnes and Noble, you want, pe you want your book cover to stand up, stand out. So when people go in there, they say, wow, look at that book. I can read it from here. It looks colorful. It's big. It's easy to read. Also, since I knew I was going to list my book on Amazon, I mean, their thumbnail images are, are really small. So you want, we want people to actually be able to see your book cover in that image like clearly. So um, make the title nice and big, make it, make a book cover that um, just stands out that because honestly, we say we don't judge books by their covers, but we do, especially picture books. I mean, when I go to the library and I'm picking out books from my kids, I get books that I look at, I don't have time to read through even the dust jacket. I look at the front of the cover, I look at the cover and I think, this looks good. I'm going to get it. And that's, that's what I do. So, okay. So in April, my book is at the printer, April of 2018. And I decide, okay, I'm going to get my books going to be done in six weeks. So I'm going to start doing school visits. <laughs> so I emailed, I just sent emails out to uh, principals. Media specialists are also good um, contacts for school visits. They set up the schedule and all that, but I didn't know that at the time. So I sent emails to the principals. Um, I just sent emails out to all the local schools in my area. And I said, hey, my name is Stacy Bauer. I teach in Ham Lake. I grew up in Blaine and I just published my first children's book. I would love to come to your school and read it to your kids. And that's it. And I didn't charge anybody anything because it was my first time. I did make a, um, an order form. And I said, I would like you to send this home to your students about a week before I come so that I know if I should bring any books along with me. And I had a spot in the order form where it said, who should I sign this to? And is there a message you know, me to write in there for them? And that went really well. Um, one thing I would change is when I did the school visits, I would visit one classroom at a time. And that way I was only able to visit maybe... I don't know, 10 classrooms. If I did it again, I would say, and plus I had to run to classroom to classroom. If I did it again, I would say, hey, can I be stationed in the gym or in the media center? And you can bring in like grade levels at a time. Then I can do the whole school. And I just think that would work better. Um, in May, my books were done. I was so excited. I drove up there with my husband and picked them up. Um, I had my book launch in the middle of May, which was great. I, it was so amazing. I mean, I, I only sold like 30 books, but I gave out um, my Kickstarter books to people who were local. And people that came there were like my kindergarten teacher came, my art teacher from when I was in elementary school, and I didn't know they were coming, so it was just great. I had college friends that came. I had uh, friends from elementary school that came. I had family. I had um, my I had uh, teachers, I had students, it was, I had church friends. It was just people from all walks of my life, which was really, really fun. And um, in, in the end of May and June, okay, my cat's gonna be super annoying now. She likes to lick hair, which is just weird. Anyway, um, at the end of May and, and June, I visited 20 schools and uh, did my school visits and that went really well too. Um, also in April and May, I tried to figure out Amazon and I decided to, don't lick my hair, I don't like that. I decided to, uh, okay, you're just gonna have to get down. Um, 
I decided to use Amazon Advantage. So that is a program where you print hardcover books somewhere else and uh, you list your book on, you open an Amazon Advantage account, list your book on Amazon Advantage and uh, oh, here comes some people downstairs and uh, it's, hold on one second. What's up guys? Nothing. Well, I'm doing a Facebook Live right now. Can you come back in like 15 minutes? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Wait, Mom. Yeah? Can you have like a snack or something? Um, I don't care, but you have to get at the table, okay? Thanks. Okay. So, okay, what was I doing? This is the mom life. Like, you know what you're saying, and then people interrupt you, and you lose your train of thought. Amazon Advantage. Um, so... I made it. I created an ebook of my book with uh, Kids Kindle Creator. is super easy. You just Rebecca emailed me the uh, PDFs. You just drag them into ebook creator. It creates the ebook. You load it up into KDP. Um, it was so easy to make it, and I put that on um, Amazon. Then I listed my hardcover on Amazon, and that took me forever. I had to figure out how to upload the pictures, how to uh, even just open my account took a long time, but I finally got it in there in June. Um, then I had to get people to visit my Amazon page. So I asked my wonderful friends and family and my author friends, hey, can you guys just click on my page? Um, I even had some people buy from my page because Amazon won't send you a purchase order for your books if they don't see traffic to your page, but you won't get traffic to your page until people buy your books. So it's kind of a, it's, it's just a weird, I don't know, it's just kind of weird. So Amazon sent me my first purchase order. It was for like seven books, but I was so excited. So I sent, then you just pack up the books, print, you uh, print out the uh, shipping labels and the packing slips, pack it up, bring it to the post office, send it to Amazon, and then they list your book as in stock. And then people are like, oh, your book's in stock. And then they think, oh, we're going to buy it. So after that all got started, then, we, we, uh, then I opened an Amazon marketing account. So with Amazon advertising, um, I'm still doing research on this, you guys. I mean, it's, I don't know why it's so hard for me. I just feel like stupid when I do this uh, campaign thing because every, other people seem like they're so good at it and it's so easy and I seem like I struggle. But basically, you create campaigns for your book in Amazon Advertising Online. And you think, okay, what are people going to type in to search for my book? What keywords should I be using that I think people are going to use to search for my book? Well, I do kangaroo book. I do uh, books about dental health, um, books about sweets, um, children's books, uh, children's books for toddlers, ages, um, uh, grade levels, themes like, like uh, listen to your parents and things like being honest and things like that. So I created some campaigns. Once you create those, you have to set a budget. So how much money do you want Amazon to spend per day? I have set mine set at $30 just because. I don't want them to spend more than that, and I figure I can afford $30 a day. Um, so, And then I set my default bid at $0.50. Cents. So what that means is, okay, if you're on Amazon and you type in books about kangaroos and my book comes up and you see my book cover there, and you think, oh, that looks, looks cute. I'm going to click on that. And you click on it. I have to pay 50 cents for your click. Once you click on it, I want you to buy my book. So it's really important that your little blurb on your Amazon page is good. Like you want to hook people in there and you want them to say, wow, this book looks really good. You, you want to, I have the look inside feature on there. I want people to see some of my pages because I don't, I want, I like to look at books before I buy them. So I figure other people like to look at books too. So I have like the first few pages um, so people can see what it looks like. Um, and then uh, I have the blurb and I have reviews on there. Um, I sent my books out to other people to review and then I put that on there. And then uh, if, if people buy it, great. If they don't, I spent 50 cents, which, oh well, that's okay because Amazon is like, oh, people are looking at your book, that's great. And then they'll give you more impressions. Impressions mean Amazon's gonna show your book. And the number of impressions you have is how many times they show your book to people. If uh, nobody clicks on your book, they're not going to think people like it. And they're not going to show it to them because Amazon wants their customers to have a good experience on their site. Um, if a lot of people click on my book, 
and they're not buying it, then I have to think about, okay, either it's my book cover or my blurb isn't good or something about my page isn't hooking people. So I'm going to look at that and figure that out. Um, if I have a keyword that's not relevant, like if I have something like a, uh, uh, children's books about um, dogs, which I wouldn't do, but if I had that, because I thought, oh, people like books about dogs. Well, they click on that and they come to my book, they're going to be like, I don't want a book about kangaroos, I want a book about dogs. So then I just wasted 50 cents and uh, and, uh, and Amazon is going to say, well, that keyword's not relevant, so we're not going to use that one anymore. Okay, I'm talking a lot. So let me know if you have any questions while I'm doing this. Um, so I pretty much spent all last summer trying to figure out Amazon. Like I'd be doing really good and then something weird would happen. And we all know, all of us that are using Amazon know that Amazon is quirky. It, uh, it, it works and all of a sudden, like last week, they just took my hardcover book off my site for some reason. It just, oh my God. Hey, just a second. Got Wyatt, Wyatt, can you go play somewhere else, please? Well, I'm going to be done. In, do you want to say hi, Landon? Come here. Oh, this is my nephew, Landon. Landon, look, your mom is watching. Say hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> and this is my son, Wyatt. Wyatt Kangaroo. Will's, Just Will's kidding, Wyatt. Landon. It says Jessica Garbus joined right there. Look what that means. She's watching. Okay. Guys, you can't play down here because I need five more minutes, okay? Go play somewhere else. Thank you. Um, what was I talking about now? Now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh. So I learned a lot about what I can and can't control. I can't control Amazon. I tried. It does not work. I can't. Uh, I learned a lot about patience. It takes a couple weeks for your ads to start working on Amazon, so just let them work. At the, in the beginning last summer, I was changing things every day, and I would never let it get started, and it would never, I would never have a chance to uh, look at my data. Well, you have to let it run. <laughs> Landon, your mom says hi. I would, never, I would never even let it run. So give it a couple weeks, let it run, collect your data, look in your uh, data dashboard, do your research, and figure out which keywords are working. If they're not working, turn them off or lower your, your uh, pay-per-click amount. If they are working, if they're doing well, <laughs> gosh, if they are working, then maybe um, direct more of your budget toward the words that are working for you. <laughs> um, okay, guys, God, I'm losing control. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see, what else was I talking about? In August of last summer, I ran my first free Kindle promo. So um, I learned how to use Canva, C-A-N-V-A, to make graphics, which also I didn't know how to make. Hey, Wyatt, Wyatt, I need you to go somewhere else, please right now. I'll be done in a few minutes. Upstairs. Okay. So I learned how to use Canva to make graphics. Another thing I did not know how to do, but Canva is, now that I know how to do it, it's super easy, but it was intimidating for me at first. Um, so if you need to learn how to use Canva, let me know and I can show you, try to show you online how to do it. Um, I also learned how to use KDP to run free Kindle promos. So there's a couple reasons to do that. One reason is to get reviews. People are always like, I need reviews on Amazon. How can I get more reviews? Run free Kindle promos. You can do three days of free Kindle every 90 days. So every three months, you can do another three days for free. So, uh, you know, people will, um, can download your book for free. And uh, then and you, on my graphic, it said, you know, free Kindle promo, please leave me a review. Obviously, they didn't all leave me a review because I had like, you know, a thousand downloads. Um, <laughs> actually, Sarah, I have thought about writing a book about how I wrote my book. But uh, maybe after I'm done with the next two books here, we'll see. Um, uh, but I did get I did get about 50 reviews on my first Kindle download that I did last summer, my first promo. So I thought, well, that's pretty good. I also have dabbled in Facebook ads. Um, you'll hear good and bad things about those. I learned how to create those. Um, another new thing I had to learn. I'm directing people toward Amazon with those. Um, and I only spend like $10 a day because... I honestly don't know if I get sales, but I'm, I am directing traffic to my Amazon page, which is always good. 
Um, let's see, what else did I do last summer? It was just, it's been a blur because then I had to go back to work last year and life got super crazy. Oh, I talked to my illustrator and she agreed to uh, doing a contract to do four books total so far. So I started writing my next book last summer, which was the one about too much stuff. Uh, when I first started this author journey, I actually made a list of kind of like Berenstein Bears, all the things my kids have done that are kind of funny that other kids do and what lesson it could teach. I wanted books that taught a lesson, um, but in a funny way, not in a preachy, like, you know, know it all -y, boring way that kids are going to be like, eye rolling, this is stupid, and I don't want to read this book. Uh, so the Too Many Sweets book, of course, is about, hey, my kid sneaks treats. She got cavities. That's the natural consequence for that. And, um, you know, so if your kid does that too, maybe you should get my book and you can read it to your child and talk to them about not sneaking treats because look what happened to Cammie when she snuck treats. She got cavities. Um, something else that Cammie does that was on my list is uh, she has so much stuff in her room that you, she can't find things. Another natural consequence. You know, you have too many things, you can't find something, you lose things, um, and then she gets upset and it's like, well, you have so much stuff and I'm telling you to clean your room every day and you don't listen and then you get, this is what happens. So I decided that's be my next book, Too Much Stuff. So um, I, I wrote the rough draft for Too Much Stuff last summer and I started editing in uh, August um, and edited three editors I hired to edit with me plus my publisher, Lindsay. We edited for at least a month. I also found some beta readers on Kidlit Manuscript 411. It's a Facebook group where you can um, say, hey, I have a picture book with about 700 words. Um, can somebody read this and let me know what you think if you have specific questions you want them to look for? And then they'll give you theirs. So you swap. Like, I'll read yours. You read mine. You give me tips. I'll give you tips. And I probably had like 10 people. I also got some of my friends from our Facebook group treated to their children because, hey, the kids are my audience. I mean, yeah, the parents have the money, so I want them to obviously buy the book. But I want kids to like my books. So I wanted to make sure that they appealed to children. So I had my friends from um, my author group read them to their kids kids and I got some feedback that way too. Um, so I made again made the storyboard probably in September for my second book and again here's my highly technological storyboard uh, where I map out where I want the pictures, where I want the words, um, same kind of font as last time. Um, I got a lot of feedback on my book cover um, what color it should be, um, just asked a lot of people. Sometimes it gets overwhelming asking because you get like a thousand different answers, but you know, just it gives you an idea of what appeals to people. Uh, Rebecca started the illustrations in October and once again was done in April, May-ish, April-ish. I decided to run another Kickstarter because uh, anybody who has started their own business before knows that uh, you don't make money for, the, well, at least normal people, <laughs> me, don't start to actually profit for at least the first couple years. So um, I'm working as a teacher. We don't have a lot of extra money. I decided I'm going to go for twice as much this time because it's, you know, it's $4,000 for the printing, a couple thousand for illustrations. Um, editing was, you know, a few hundred dollars. Then you have your website that you're paying for and marketing uh, tools like these and bookmarks and uh, stickers and, um, what else did I pay for? There's just a lot. Kickstarter takes 8%. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Um, oh, you know, I have to pay for Amazon ads and Facebook charges you, of course, to use their uh, marketing on there too. So there's just a lot. Gas money to drive to all these schools. So I decided to go for 8,000. I thought, oh, that'll be no problem. Well, it was hard. It was hard to get twice as much, but I did it. And, um, I actually got a little bit over $9,000 and I used all that money. I ended up ordering 3,000 books um, of these right off the bat. The more books you order, the cheaper they are. Um, if I would have only ordered 500 books, they would have been like $4 a piece at the printer. Since I ordered 3,000, they were like $1.90, which is a lot cheaper when you're ordering 3,000 books. So um, as those were getting, we're at the printer for six weeks, I... Uh, um, I again made a Kindle version of my book and then I put that on um, Amazon which was a lot easier this time because I already knew what I was doing and then I did something different I put this book I put my second book up for pre-order and I thought if I can get people to pre-order this book um, 
maybe Amazon will send me a big purchase order in the beginning because last time it took me a couple months to get going on purchase orders for my first book. So I asked some of my author friends who are amazing. I said, hey, will you guys pre-order my book for me? And, and so they did. They created a lot of traffic for me. They pre-ordered. They clicked on my link. And my first purchase order for that book was over 400 books. So I sent off 400, over 400 books to Amazon uh, in June. Um, started doing ads for this book a couple weeks ago, and it is currently ranked about uh, 16,000 out of 12 million on Amazon. My first book is at 12,000 out of 12 million right now. You might be thinking, wow, that sounds so easy. No, it's not. My book, flipped, like I said, they took this book off of Amazon last Friday, and it said it, was, it wasn't available. And it was available. I know they had it in stock, because I checked on Advantage, and they had over 300 copies. And of course, I couldn't call Amazon because it was the weekend. So my rank went from uh, 16,000 down to 150,000 in three days because it said my book was unavailable, so people weren't buying it. Uh, so I had to call Amazon yesterday, and they listed it back on there. But now I have to start all over again from the beginning to get my book back up to the rank it was at. So what's where am I at right now? Well, this summer I am doing uh, library story times in the area. I got three library branches to. Um, I have my book. I just went in there and said, hey, I'm a local author. Give my book. Will you uh, be interested in having it here? And they were like, yeah, that's great. So I have three. I'm going to try to get more. That's one of my goals. Um, story times. I did the presentation last night at the library. I do some vendor events, but I did a few last summer. And, you know, with my family and my young kids, I just I don't like to be away from them very much. So in the past... I mean, you sit at a table for eight hours and you sell five or ten books. It's just not worth it for me. I can sell ten books on Amazon without even leaving my house. So, yeah, I'll get out there into the community and do vendor events and I'll do school visits, but it's on my own time when I feel like I, I'm able to do that when my kids are busy or something. If it's like a couple hours, it's fine, but I'm not going to spend ten hours sitting in a park somewhere just to sell five books or something. It's just not worth it. Um, so tips for new authors. Editing, obviously, is very important. That's something I tell my students, too. Hey, I did not just publish my first copy of my book. I edited a lot. Uh, do your research. You know, Get on these author Facebook groups. Talk to people. Meet people. Make connections. Um, like I said, I knew nothing about marketing. I knew nothing about any of this. I learned it all through people I've met in the business. Make connections with editors, illustrators, other authors, marketing geniuses, formatters, graphic designers. All those people helped me. They all have skills that I don't have. And uh, if they didn't teach me how to do it, they did it for me. And I do things for them. And you kind of swap your skill set back and forth online, which is just awesome. Uh, find your audience. Who's going to want your book? My first book, my audience was a dentist. Um, teachers, Dental Health Month is in February, so I really uh, ran a lot of ads during February. Uh, parents, of course, grandparents. Um, and recently, I just started marketing on Instagram to uh, for this book right here to um, uh, people who are interested in nutrition. So hashtag healthy moms. Hashtag uh, kids nutrition things like that and something I do a lot of that I think is good is good because it only cost me like four dollars is uh, I'll look up hashtags like that I'll click on the hashtag and it'll show top posts on Instagram and and I'll find those people that post a lot that have a lot of followers probably at least five thousand followers but not like fifty thousand because when you get up into the fifty thousand range they want to charge you for their services. If you stay below that, they'll do it for free. And I just message them and I say, hey, I have this book. Um, it's about my daughter eating too many sweets. And I noticed that your Instagram talks a lot about kids' nutrition. Can I send, I'd love to send you an autographed copy. Would you mind posting about my book and doing a review? And a lot of them don't respond, which is fine. But a lot of them will say, sure, that'd be great. I would love that. So I've probably gotten about 40 different people to post on Instagram now, have I made any sales from that? I don't know. There's, I don't know how to track that. I'm sure there's a way to do it that I don't know. But uh, I'm getting my book out there. I'm getting eyes on my book. And if they click on my book on Amazon, it's traffic. You know, For this book, my second book, my audience, again, is parents, grandparents. But also, this book is about having too much stuff. So my audience is really people who are interested in minimalism. Marie Kondo, uh, so hashtag minimalist mommyhood. My hashtag uh, Marie Kondo and yes I did message Marie Kondo she didn't get back to me <laughs> but I thought what have I got to lose it takes me one minute 
Um, so um, I found a bunch of moms who were interested in minimalism and I sent them a private message and I just sent out five books yesterday um, that they're going to post about on Instagram and share my book with their followers. And if it leads to a few sales, then it was worth it to me because it only is like two seventy five dollars to send my book out through media mail. Um, find your cheerleaders. So I have a core group of people who have my back. Um, honestly, most of them are authors. Um, you think certain people are going to support you and they don't really do anything, which is fine. They're not comfortable with it or whatever. And uh, some people come out of the woodwork and they're there for you and it's it's just amazing. So uh, I got a group of about 10 people for my second Kickstarter that liked all my posts. They shared my posts. They... Um, and they were there and you know what is really weird about Facebook that's annoying is that when you have a business page if you do a post and nobody likes it uh, they won't show it to people it'll actually say on your Facebook business page 14 people have seen this well how am I supposed to get people to like it and comment on it if you won't show it to anyone but Facebook doesn't want to show it to anyone if they're not gonna like it because they want people to have a good Facebook experience so you have to get people to like it so that Facebook will show it to people, which is really weird. So I got a group of about 10 people that liked and commented on all my posts every single time. They were awesome. And then Facebook would show a few hundred people. And the more that people like it, the more people they'll show. So heads up, if you know someone that has a Facebook business page that has a business, just take a second to like their stuff because the more you like it, the more Facebook will show it to people. It just takes you a second to click like or even to comment and say, hey, great job or congratulations. Facebook sees it and is like, oh, they like that. I'm going to show it to more people. That's just one really easy way you can support me or other authors or other people that are trying to run their own business. Um, did I message them on Instagram or Messenger? I So till um, for the Instagram influencers, I messaged them on Instagram. So I just went to their um, the little arrow that's in the upper right corner of your screen. I clicked on that, and then, uh, and then it just has a, a little rectangle that says message, and I just clicked message, and I messaged them on there. So that's how I did that. Um, oh, one mistake I made. When you're first starting out your business, you should really open a business checking account immediately. I did not open my business checking account until June because I didn't think about it and I started I should have opened it in February when I ran my Kickstarter because then I had to figure out okay what purchases on this credit card were for my business which ones are personal and for tax purposes and for my own financial uh, finances like how, am I profiting yet how much have I spent this month so now I have a business checking account that everything comes in and out of and I have an American Express that I use only for my business and I pay it with my business account. Um, oh, I should have brought down my square. I have another thing you can do if you're going to do, if you're going to sell your books yourself, like at um, vendor events or really anywhere, you should get a square. It's a little tiny square thing. It's a card reader that you plug into your phone. It's free. Yay, something for free. Plug it into your phone. People can run their credit card through. And uh, then Square actually lets them sign it right on your phone. They ask if they want a receipt. Um, if they don't, they click no. And then Square actually sends you an invoice like, you made this much money on your Square today, which is great for tax purposes. Um, take your audience along with you on your ride. Grab them. Get their attention. Make fun. I mean, you guys know I like to write funny posts on Facebook. I'm not the type of person. I mean, sometimes I do. But I'm not the type of person that always wants to post like, ooh, my kids are so perfect. Look, they're, they're playing so nice together all the time. And they look so happy. No. My kids play nice together like 40% of the time. They're happy mm, maybe 70% of the time. And... Uh, I'm not going to be that kind of fakey person that does fake posts online and makes people feel bad about their, <laughs> their situation. Plus, I just think it's fun to read funny posts. So when my kids do funny stuff, and sometimes, yeah, it's naughty, I post it and I take people along with me and say, hey, look, Cammie's still sneaking treats. Or, hey, look, how messy Cammie's room is. And yes, I ask her first and she doesn't care that I'm posting it. Um, how long before the book was available did you do pre-order? So... Uh, my, for my second book, it was available and I had the date available for June 19th. I set up the pre-order a month ahead of time and the ebook. And I, wanted, I had a book bub deal. That's another thing you can do, which um, you pay, I think it was $100 
And uh, BookBub is like a, an online kind of library thing where um, people can subscribe and BookBub sends out, hey, this Kindle is free, this ebook is free today, or this ebook's on sale to all their subscribers. And they have thousands of them, if, if not more. And uh, so I ran a BookBub deal. I paid 100 bucks. I got tons of downloads. I got a few reviews. So I don't really know if it was worth it for me. I, I don't know if I'll do it again or not. But I did that in May. Um, okay. Let's see. My number one tip is get out there, get out of your comfort zone, market your book, talk about your book. Do you believe in your book? Yes. Well, get out there and act like you like it. And why should people buy it? It's funny. It's uh, relatable. Do your kids sneak treats too? Get my book. Do your kids have too much stuff? Yeah, get my book. I mean, I don't know about you, but as a teacher and a mom, when I buy books, I buy books that are going to provide uh, conversation talking points for my children. So um, if, if, my, if my kids are fighting a lot, I'm going to get a book about kids that fight, that, that have arguments. I'm going to read to my kids. And we're going to talk about it. If my kids uh, are watching too much TV, I'll get the Berenstein Bears too much TV. And I'll read it, and we'll talk about it. I think books are a great way to uh, to uh, have good conversations with your kids. That's a fun way. That's not like super luxury. Um, don't forget to copyright your book. You can do that online. A Library of Congress control number. There's debate whether or not you need that for libraries. Um, in the past, you needed it for sure. I asked the librarian last night, and she said she wasn't sure because she doesn't select books anymore. So I did. Um, because it was easy to get it and it and didn't really I didn't have to do much for it So I just did it anyways Your book so a little barcode on the back see I should have my book down here and I totally don't have it but uh um, The barcode on the back of your book. I did not know this but you can get barcodes for free online So don't when you go to Balker b-o-w-k-e-r uh, sells the ISBN numbers. You can get a group of 10 numbers. But for the barcode itself, I bought mine from Balker, but apparently you can get them for free. <laughs> so don't, uh, don't pay for those. Um, let's see, did I donate the books to the libraries? No, the libraries bought the books. Um, I just went into the, I went into the library with my book. I said, I'm an author in the area. Uh, I'm a teacher in the area. I grew up in this area. This is my book. Would you be interested in having it at your library? And um, yeah, I was nervous because I didn't know if they would buy it or not, but they did. It helped because it helped to, I had a, I have a really close relationship with the librarian that's closest to my house. Um, I've been taking my kids to story time there since they were born. Um, I know her really well. She would come to my, my elementary school that I taught at and do programs with the kids there. And um, so she's the first one I went to, and of course she bought three copies right off of Amazon. Um, then I went to the library in Forest Lake over here, and I, I asked if I could do a story time. And because I did the story time for free, um, she bought a few copies right directly from me. So, um, and then another library just down the road bought some copies too. So I'm gonna try to get to other libraries in the area when I have time. Um, how long did it take the Library of Congress, how long did it take me to get the Library of Congress number? It only takes, I think you get it right that same day because I remember I had to have it for them to print the book. So I registered for it that day and I think they emailed to you later that day. So it doesn't take very long. Um, Let's see. So my advice, do not go to a vanity publisher. Do not pay someone to publish your book. Okay. Will, can you possibly bring one of my books down here, please? My husband's upstairs. My, can you bring one of each of my books down here, if possible? Sure. Thank you. My husband rocks. It's helpful when, you're, when your spouse supports you, and my husband does. He's awesome. Um, don't pay the wrong people to promote for you. Okay, I, just, I paid this lady $250 to promote my book during my Kickstarter, and she did, but I don't know how many sales I got from it. You can get people to promote your book for free because they believe in you, and they, uh, they want you to succeed. Use those people. Use the people that are behind you because they love you and they love your book and they want you to succeed and they um, they want to help you because you're a new author. They'll do it for free. You don't need to find someone and pay them hundreds of dollars like I did. At least that's my opinion. I wouldn't do it again. Um, 
Don't try to scrimp uh, save money on illustrations. You get what you pay for. Um, my illustrator is not the cheapest one, but she's worth it. I mean, I hear over and over again, I love your illustrations. Who is your illustrator? When you are a picture book author, you, uh, people get your book because of the illustrations. Yeah, they're going to read the blurb, and if it's a good blurb on the back of your book or in the dust jacket, they're going to buy it, but the illustrations is what catches people's eye. Don't I mean, when I go to bookstores, I'm not going to buy a book that has really cheap looking illustrations. I'm just not because it's a picture book and that's what people pay for illustrations and the storyline. Um, I did not send a physical copy of my book to get the Library of Congress number. I uploaded an e my ebook copy to get that. Um, and my last tip is do not, unless you just want to publish your book just to say you did it, don't get your book printed. Uh, and then expect it to sell and be like, oh, why isn't my book selling? It's a lot of work. You have to get out. You have to put it on Amazon. You have to get out there. You have to, here comes my husband with my books. You have to, uh, like I said, get out of your comfort zone. Thank you. Is it pouring outside? It looks like it is. Okay, so this is my first book right here. Um, this is my font, Gloria Hallelujah, right here. Uh, I decided to put the author and illustrator down here at the bottom. Um, on the spine of my book, well, oh, everything's backwards on here. On the spine of my book, I have um, the title, and then this is my publisher down here at the bottom. And then um, I had my uh, illustrator do um, illustrated end papers, which I had to pay more for, but I just think it's cute. When you open a book and it's just blank, it's kind of boring, but I think this is kind of eye-catching. Um, on the title page, I've got my series name up here, my title, and then the author and illustrator here, and then this is my publisher, Rodney K. Press, who is Lindsay. Um, another question I had was, what do I put on the copyright page? Well, I just did research. I went to the library, got a bunch of picture books, looked at my friend, my author friend's books that I bought, and uh, just looked at what they had. What did they have here? I took notes. I have the title name. I have the copyright date. I have the, here's the ISBN number that I told you about that I had to pay for. Here's my um, library of control, of Congress control number. Here's the genre, juvenile fiction. Um, I have my website right here. I have that is printed in the good old US of A. Um, and then my book starts right here. And again, my storyboard showed that I wanted um, the words in the middle on this page, not no other illustrations, that I wanted uh, Cammie looking out of her room right here on this side of the page. But um, I gave Rebecca artistic freedom too to decide on coloring and, and how big things were going to be. And she had ideas too. And of course, I took her advice because she's amazing. Um, this is what the matte paper looks like. You can see that it's not like super shiny, but it still has a shine to it. Um, this is the book cover is that soft matte material on the, on the outside of the book there. Then on the back of this book, I have the, um, about the author and about the <laughs> author and illustrator page in the back with photos of, um, and Rebecca. On my second book. Um, the font is the same. I did it a little bit different here because I just thought that looked kind of cute. Same thing on the bottom, same thing on the spine. I've got the uh, um, author, illustrator, title, and then Rodney K. Press on the end. The end papers look like this in this book. Um, title page, copyright page is the same. I assigned it a different ISBN number. There's the genre, library of control, com, Congress number right here, and uh, the publisher name right here. Dedication page here. It's always fun to create a dedication. I like that. And then the book starts right here with her amazing illustrations. Um, this book, I did something a little bit different that I really like. In the back of the book for this one, um, I have my author illustrator page, but I also decided to do an advice page because um, I just thought it'd be kind of fun. So I have a photograph of Cammie in her messy room, uh, which she gave me permission to put on here. And then um, I, I polled, I asked a bunch of people on my Facebook business page for advice. Like if your kid is not keeping their room clean, um, what are some good tips? And then I put them on here with their first name. I thought that was kind of cool and kind of cute for and a lot of parents have said that they like that a lot. Okay, um, resources that I have used, Shayla Raquel has an awesome blog. 
Um, all the author Facebook groups, go on there and find them. Kickstarter um, is a great way to raise money. Indiegogo is another one. Vista Print and U Printing for business cards, magnets, postcards, bookmarks, my tablecloth runner, my stickers. Walker for the ISBNs. Um, GoDaddy and WordPress from my word website. Um, uh, let's see. Hmm, what else? I think that's it. I'm, where I'm at right now is I'm thinking about my third book. So should I, maybe you guys can answer this, should I have my third book um, introduce Wyatt as a main character in a book about sibling rivalry? Or should I have them both be the main characters and then have Wyatt be in the fourth book mostly? Or should I do a book about Cammie having too much screen time, which I think is a thing with kids? Um, and have Wyatt be in that more and then have Wyatt be in the next book. I'm kind of stuck about where I want book three to go So I haven't started that one at all um, What sells better paperback or hardcover? Well, that's a That's a good question see Authors make more money generally with hardcovers um, through Amazon Advantage uh, Amazon pays you 45% of whatever you sell so, um, and my hardcovers, I priced them at $17.99. And uh, regardless of how much Amazon lowers the price, like right now, um, Cami Kangaroo Has Too Many Sweets is on Amazon for $12. But I still get 45% of $17.99, um, which is a great deal for me. I still, what is that, like $8, $8 or something per book? And you might think, $8, that's not very much. Well, <laughs> when you're selling... 10 books a day on Amazon or more, or even five books a day on Amazon without even leaving your house, for me it's worth it. I don't have time to go out and uh, market my book at all these different schools and daycares and, and uh, vendor events because I'm a full-time mom and I'm a full-time teacher. I can't do it, I just can't. So for me, uh, getting these on Amazon as a hardcover is worth it because I make, when you, when you do print on demand for paperback, you just don't make as much money unless you're you have like a series that you have a ton of books and then you're great at marketing and you sell like millions of copies or just a lot then it might be worth it for you but for me I make I would make more money doing this so that's why I chose to do hardcover okay does anybody else have any other questions I'm trying to think if I want to talk about anything else I did um, I did uh, um, use one of my friends clay from my author group and uh, he's awesome at making logos so he designed my new logo for me these are my new business cards um, this is the logo that he came up with which I think is awesome so um, I don't I was gonna see if I could put them on my book somewhere but you know the book is already pretty busy on the front and uh, on the back, I thought about maybe putting it somewhere on the back. We'll see. Um, on the back cover of this one, I have my blurb, which I wrote with help from. What I do is I write the blurb, and then I post it on, in the Facebook author groups, and I get input from people. So, you know, you should do this instead or whatever. So, I don't know. Um, this is praise um, from, from my first book on the back of this one, so people know, oh, there's a book number one. Great. Um, on the back of my business card, I have all my social media info, so Instagram, Facebook, website, and then it says all books are available on Amazon. Um, I think it's important, one person pointed out, you should use the same name for all three, and I did. I agree that, that it's, it's easy that way, so I did that. Uh, let's see. Thank you for all of your great feedback and encouragement. I would not, definitely not be able to uh, be doing this if it wasn't for my, my parents who raised me to be a go-getter. Um, I'm, I'm highly motivated and a determined person. I don't give up easily and, and uh, that's them. And they've always been behind me and encouraged me. Uh, my husband, like I said, is like my number one fan. He supports everything I do. Um, my uh, my sisters, who have always been there for me. My other friends, my uh, my illustrator, who is amazing, and she has supportive family and friends also. Uh, my publisher, Lindsay, who is always there to answer questions. And uh, my author friends, who I've made, who I feel like, even though we've only met each other online, we're... <laughs> I just feel really close to them and I'm really grateful for all of their support and time and advice and I just wanted to give back which is why I'm doing this right now okay so if nobody else has any questions I'm gonna sign off
um, and see, it looks like it's pouring outside. I was supposed to go to a, I set up a play date with my class, my second grade class from last year at the school, but it's pouring out. So we're not going to do it today. If any of you are watching, hi kids, I'm sorry. I really want to just see you today. I miss you. And, uh, we'll, I'm going to email all your parents and we'll see if we can set up a play date for maybe later this week or something, hopefully when it's nicer outside. So, uh, it was great seeing everybody on here, and um, if you have any additional questions, you can message me or, or post on here, and I'll be glad to help you out. Okay, bye.